Sage got support. Draw your line interview. Drop one take one. The thing I love the most about snowboarding is the community. Everyone rides a little bit different, wears different things. The experiences. Have that passion in your life. <laughs> We've kind of been able to go on together and share those moments with your friends yeah, and make new friends along the way. If you have a good mental game, you can really do anything you want to do. Is to just try to be 1% better than you were yesterday. This is like what I wanted to ride today. And you can have your own style, you know, and that's the greatest thing. Why, well, I like snowboarding, so seems good to me. I love being in the mountains so much. It's where I feel the most at home. I had always been obsessed with board sports since I was a kid. Like my first memories of those, I had already known how to snowboard, surf, and skateboard. I've gone through ups and downs with snowboarding. Loved it, I've been angry at it, it's became a sport to me. But in the end of the day, it's the one thing in life that truly makes me happy. It's the perfect relationship, I think. I like having fun on a board. It just so happens that it's winter out. I don't really mind the elements. Yo, what up? Hey, what up, John? Yeah, Sage, how's it going, bro? Not bad, just... Sitting in summer, packing for winter right now. We headed down to Chile. Me and Jeremy Thornburg hit them up, made a plan to go get some powder and just kind of explore down there. I, I've only been down there once to snowboard. We fly into Santiago, we land on, on Sunday. And yeah, I guess we can just rendezvous there and maybe see where everything's looking good right before we show up and either drive or take a short flight. <laughs> I think the first couple of days of shredding will be the best. Spencer Whiting and Judd were already down there surfing, actually. <laughs> Judd is an amazing surfer and even better snowboarder, if you can believe that. Dude, I'm super excited to get on snow. I honestly was like kind of itching today. Wasn't expecting much. I just was like, oh, cool. We're going to go ride with Sage. This will be super sick. Getting to go to a new place like Chile that I'd never been, that Sage had a little experience in. It really was a good learning lesson for how to move forward and do more trips like that. Have a good last couple days. Thank you. Safe travels. And uh, yeah, I'll see you when you get down here. Starting point for us is looking at the grand scheme of things of, okay, why are we going there? What's our purpose of that trip? What do we want out of it? And how do we want to get it? Hey! Having a good crew is the most important thing. You want people you can rely on. It's so much more fun when you step into the mountains with people that you can trust. There's a common ground for us being snowboarders or people that do action sports. I think that's what is nice about the community. The snowboard community is so awesome, so accepting of everyone. You know, you always take the younger people in, you show them the ropes, and it's this never-ending cycle, which I think is really cool. And then once we show up, we basically have a meeting. You're finally there. You don't want to just gun it right to the spot. Okay, yeah, we're here. We're gonna, we're gonna get all the clips. You know, that's there's a lot of steps along the way that you need to take to be safe. Safety is becoming more important than just going out and getting the shot. That's where we were shredding. And there was a big avalanche cycle. But that, it's, yeah. it got old. We somehow timed it really, really good. When we arrived, it had just snowed two and a half feet. I don't know if it's luck or all the things that we've uh, done along the way to prep for the trip. How much did you snow, you think? Like? At that time, we got about a meter yeah, in one, okay. in like two storm yeah. together. We ended up getting really amazing snow conditions. Is it usually pretty windy in the valleys? They get like suction cut or? What, what I like about this place is it holds snow forever. Yeah. Dude, this awesome. place is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Having Judd in the backcountry was really, really cool. Oh! 
Working with Judd is basically like taking care of my little brother right now. I could be at the Cardiff Castle party. <laughs> Him being a 21 year old now and it's really his first trip with Sage in the backcountry. I'll always be learning. I don't think like there's ever a point where you can be like 100% confident. It's cool to see how he's taken his park snowboarding, his surfing skills, and kind of like blend that in to the backcountry. He was learning so fast. Nice you can see this skill set developing in him, not even day by day, trick by trick, or just dropping in on these features. He's a really good teacher, I guess, so that's super cool. He's a great snowboarder and like someone I look up to, so it's cool to be able to ride with a person like that. Asking questions and becoming familiar with the terrain you're in and what we're doing out there, it's a grown-up move for sure. And just to see him harness that and uh, not really back away from the challenge was really cool. Oh, no. He was crushing it. making sure the crew all has their equipment, making sure everyone's on the same vibe at the beginning of the day. Dropping five. The thing that I have noticed and been most inspired by with Sage is the depth of knowledge he has for snowboarding in general. He's just such a legend in all different aspects of snowboarding and then just having him as a mentor is super cool. There was definitely a period of time after that really high high from the Olympics that all I wanted to do was get back to snowboarding. In the summer of 2016 going into 2017, I told all of my sponsors that I wasn't going to compete anymore and it was the most scared I've ever been in my life. It was like a new reset. It was a full mental battle and I was so determined to learn because I wanted to get going as fast as I could to show everyone that I could do this. And I felt like I was a little kid again. I was so excited. Usually we go out and we start checking the snow, maybe have a run where you can just keeping on your process. Let's dig a pit, let's check out the snow and keep moving towards that goal. You know, you want to make sure everyone's in a safe spot, make sure the whole crew's dialed and uh, drop in. And you get those clips that you've been thinking of. Photographers and filmers in the backcountry, it's just like, you got to know they're ready and you got to call your drop and everything. And You want to redo it? Just know that it's on because you might not get that shot again. You're not going to have as many opportunities in the backcountry as you do in the park for getting shots. How'd we do? Dude, I think we did good. I'm just filming. That was sick, dude. You're out there. Like, it's a rule. There is no grocery store, no gas station. You got to cut your own firewood. It's uh, definitely the most um, kind of off the grid I've been for that period of time. All these 20,000 foot peaks are everywhere. And you're in these valleys and you just feel so small. I love being in new terrain like that and feeling the energy of the mountains, just kind of getting into a groove. Let's see, I picked the rockiest entrance I think I've ever done in my life here in Chile. <laughs> I think for me, draw your line is just making the most of what life throws at you. Yeah, buddy. Do what you want to do, make your mark however you see fit, and just keep going. I look back on the, my past with snowboarding, where I came from, how I snowboard, who I snowboard with, and I really think that's beautiful at the end of the day, is that everyone has a different life to live, and we all weave in and out of each other, and it's just one of the greatest things ever going with intuition, making the most of every situation, and really just kind of trusting your gut feeling and making reactions to what's in front of you, not so much focused on the future or the past, just being in the moment. There's not totally a blueprint to snowboarding. I might go to the Olympics or X Games or Alaska and ride some big mountain terrain, but at the end of the day, I always come home and ride with my friends. You share those moments, and then while you're creating new ones, snowboarding it could be 
a powder day and everyone gets together and you just have the best day ever. And it, it always circles back to that. Bye for now.